there are some unusual and surprising friendships between animals that exist in the real world, which might seem like something that only happens in Disney movies. Here are seven of the most peculiar and unexpected animal relationships. Number seven, Nile Crocodile, Plover Bird. Here's an unexpected pairing that might surprise those who are not familiar with the intricacies of nature. The Nile Crocodile is known for being one of the most ferocious predators, notorious for attacking humans and ambushing prey by leaping out of the water. It seems unlikely that such a formidable creature would form a relationship with a bird, but the plover bird has found a mutually beneficial way to coexist with these reptiles. This partnership is a perfect example of mutualism, a concept we have previously explored. The plover bird feeds on the bits of food that remain stuck in the crocodile's teeth. In return, the crocodile gets a free dental cleaning, which helps prevent infections and tooth decay. The two species have developed a strong bond, with crocodiles leaving their mouths open for hours on end to signal their readiness for a cleaning. The birds recognize this behavior and flock to the crocodiles, knowing that they will find a quick and easy meal. Despite the apparent danger, this relationship has proven to be highly successful for both parties involved. It is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of nature and a reminder that unexpected partnerships can sometimes yield remarkable results. Number six, sharks and pilotfish. Now this one you've no doubt heard of because it's been featured on shows like the Magic School Bus before. Due to its documentation, I speak of course of sharks and pilotfish. Sharks are by and large one of the most feared creatures on the planet, and for good reason. They have really sharp teeth, long powerful bodies, and are more than willing to take a bite out of just about. Anything if their personalities dictated, but as great as sharks are, they're not immune to parasites of the ocean trying to take a bite out of them. And that's where the pilot fish comes in as they'll feed off of this parasite. But they also get good food either way. The pilot fish get sustenance by feeding on the pieces of prey that are left behind or dropped all over the place by the sharks. So they end up getting fed in multiple ways and the benefits ironically don't end there. You see, because of the fear that sharks inspire in the ocean and on land, very few creatures are openly willing to swim next to them. So thus, the pilot fish basically has a bodyguard while also having a constant food source. And again, the shark gets to have itself cleaned of annoying parasites and doesn't mind having the minor company around since they can earn their keep. Number five, coyote and badger. To clarify, I'm not referring to the honey badger as we all know they are fearless creatures. However, regular badgers have been observed collaborating with other animals, including the coyote. While coyotes are often seen as one of the most disliked land animals, badgers and coyotes have been known to work together to hunt for food. So how does this unlikely partnership work? Quick coyotes can chase down a fleeing animal, while badgers can dig into prey that burrows underground. By working in tandem, both species are more successful hunters than if they were hunting alone. However, there are some conditions to this relationship that make it even more peculiar. For one, they are both hunters. Additionally, while the relationship has been documented many times, it's not the only way they hunt. In fact, during the winter, badgers can easily find food without the help of coyotes. Therefore, why do they work together, and how did this relationship even begin? This is a unique partnership, and yet it works. Nature truly holds many mysteries. However, if a coyote had tried this with a honey badger, we all know what would have happened. Number four, hermit crabs slash sea anemones. This is another very popular symbiotic relationship that's formed in the animal world, because for this one we go to the world of the ocean where hermit crabs are under constant threat of predators, mainly ones that love to snack on them from above before they can even react to what's going on. However, there is a clever trick that these hermit crabs have to help ensure their safety. They find a sea anemones and then put it on its back. That way, when the predator, such as an octopus, comes around, the anemones will sting them as they try to get the crab. That way, the crab stays safe as it travels along, and the anemones fits perfectly on its back so that it clearly has a match made in ocean heaven. But what do the sea anemone get from all this transaction? Well, aside from a free ocean cruise, 
they're able to eat the snacks that are left behind by the hermit crabs when they eat. Again, this is a true symbiotic relationship and one of mutualism. C, M, and E have other such relationships with creatures, one of which I'll detail a little bit later in the list. Either way, this is a great example of creatures noticing the effect that things like anemones have on others and realizing that they can utilize it to their own advantage. Number three, tarantula and frog. I have to admit, anything related to spiders freaks me out. The idea of any creature other than a spider working with one is beyond my understanding. However, a photographer in Peru captured an interesting partnership between a Colombian lesser back tarantula and a dotted humming frog. The tarantula was seen hovering over the frog, which was positioned in front of a set of spider eggs. The spider wants protection for its eggs, so it uses the frog as a guard to keep away ants and other bugs that may try to take the eggs. In return, the tarantula offers protection for the frog, which is often prey to other creatures, ensuring that predators do not get too close. I'm not exactly sure how the relationship came to be, but it probably happened randomly, and both parties decided to continue partaking in it. Perhaps animals communicate with one another to ensure a pairing works before it is done. Either way, it works for both sides, and these pictures prove that it happened. Number two, drongos and meerkats. Earlier I was talking about Pumba, and now I'm here to talk about his best friend forever in Timon. Sadly, meerkats and Vothog are not known to be the most friendly of creatures, but meerkats are apparently fine with getting close to drongos for certain things. Even if it's for the worse among the rolling red dunes of the Kalahari Desert, the song of the fork-tailed drongos provides a warning that predators are lurking close by. The songbird acts as the desert's watchdog, always poised and ready to warn its fellow creatures of impending danger. Which sounds great, right? Well, there's clearly nothing wrong with that. Except that these birds are liars and they're tricking creatures like meerkats with every single cry they make. Drongos have a talent known as vocal mimicry. Think of it like parrots, but instead of copying words, they copy vocal alarms from other species like meerkats. They'll spy a group of meerkats eating food, sound the alarm, and then watch as they flee without the food. That's when the drongos will swoop in and eat everything that it sees. Thus, it doesn't really need to hunt in the traditional sense, but rather pay attention to the creatures that have been hunting and finish the meal for them. These birds are indeed very much jerks. Number one, African rhinos slash African oxpeckers. This is a familiar story, but it focuses on some of the big and small creatures that live in Africa. The African rhino is a grazing animal that shelters in dense thickets of thorny brush on the savanna. Unfortunately, ticks lurk in both of those places, waiting to attach themselves to a host. The rhino's skin is thick, but it is also very sensitive and well supplied with blood just under the surface. Ticks and other skin parasites make the rhino itch terribly, so it spends a lot of time and energy scratching itself on rocks and trees to get rid of them. But sometimes, scratching doesn't work, and the rhino needs a little help. That's where the African oxpecker comes in. This bird helps to clean the rhino by plucking ticks from its skin, but it does so selectively. The oxpecker prefers big, fat ticks that are already engorged with blood, ignoring the little ones that irritate the rhino just as badly. The oxpecker also searches for any wounds or sores that the rhino may have and removes bothly larvae and other parasites. However, the process also removes scabs and tissue, causing fresh bleeding, which is obviously bad for the rhino. The oxpecker seems not always helpful, as it can be quite selective about which ticks it removes and which wounds it cleans. Some may even call it a jerk bird. The oxpecker does this to other animals as well, so the rhino also has to deal with it. Overall, these interactions between African animals are fascinating and it's interesting to see how they adapt and depend on each other in various ways. That's all from the world of unusual animal relationships. Were you surprised that all these different types of animals are capable of forming relationships with each other that are not within their species or even likely to interact with them. Which of those combinations did you find the most intriguing? Let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out the other interesting content appearing on the screen. 
I'll see you next time.